my new Calvary Baptist Church family and friends. We are so grateful that you decided to worship with us through whatever medium you are on. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord and let us exalt his name together. Oh, what a blessing it is for us to come together for such a time as this. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray our prayer of invocation, most holy and all my God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for just allowing us to be here one more time. We thank you, Lord, for just breathing on us, Lord, and filling us with your Shekinah glory. Lord, we invite you into this worship experience, and we just hope, Lord, that there's something that's being said on this day that will convict someone to let them know that you are the way, the truth, and the life. We thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Let us worship God in spirit as well as in truth. Hurrah!
For there is a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know that it is the spirit of the Lord. Uh, for the song continues to say, there are sweet expressions on each and every face. And I know that it is the presence of the Lord. That, that in moments when we are called just just ask to think about the goodness of the Lord and all that God has done for us. We can't help but worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish you were here in the sanctuary today so that you might feel the spirit that is causing individuals to tarry to just spend some time in the presence of the living God. Because I declare, when you think about all that God has done for you, when you think about the places God has saved and spared you from, when you think about the words, my grace is sufficient, and what it means in your life, you can't help but worship the Lord for just a little while. And so we're grateful. We're grateful for the music ministry of the New Calvary Baptist Church. Grateful for Elder Willie Moody. Grateful for Doc Christian. Grateful for Tony Wofford. Grateful for Sean Parker. Grateful for these musicians that have given of themselves. Grateful for this awesome choir that just wanted to worship this morning. Good morning to you. And we hope and pray that God's presence continues to fill you up. We want to move faithfully and share and just the words of you uh, in this moment as we uh, give and share in some announcements 
uh, for this morning, March the 14th. We hope that some of you aren't getting on this virtual worship too late as we had to spring forward uh, and share and worship the Lord. So we hope that you are indeed bright-eyed and available uh, to worship with us this morning. We want to just share words of condolence, even in um, the spirit of praise for uh, the Delk family, that our former trustee, William Delk, lost his sister, Sister Myra Delk Wallace. She went home to be with the Lord, and we are praying for that family. Uh, the viewing will take place at Ritterick, Riddick Funeral Home. Uh, on March the 16th, that is Tuesday, that will be the viewing from 2 to 7, and the family will be there from 5 to 7, and uh, we also will let you know that the funeral will be Wednesday, March 17th at Rid Riddick Funeral Home. Also want to celebrate the life of Sister Emma Tyree. Uh, Sister Tyree's homegoing celebration will be Saturday the 20th at 11 o'clock. Uh, and so please make sure um, those prayers and condolences go out uh, to that family. We want to thank Deacon Rivers for his faithfulness and sticking uh, with and sharing that information with the New Calvary family as we continue to mourn what one who was a wonderful spirit uh, and a blessed heart and a giver from the very essence of her soul. And we are grateful uh, for her life. Uh, beloved, the Family Advocacy Ministry, the FAM, is uh, relaunching their church-wide food pantry, and it was a huge success. Uh, it was indeed a blessing as we, New Calvary, have partnered with Wegmans Food in Virginia Beach, and over 30 families have, and lives were touched in our drive through food pantry on March the 6th. So we want to thank all of those who shared and thank Reverend Stanford Mack for his coordinating as they blessed the community and continue to bless the community. Uh, the ministry will continue to give food away to all that come to the church parking lot uh, on on uh, the following Saturdays from 10.30 to 12 p.m. It is a first come, first serve, uh, and it is touchless. We will just open, you just open your trunk, uh, and the bag will be placed in your trunk, and when um, the supply is gone, they will shut down. So we want you uh, to just be aware. So that is from 10.30 to 12 p.m., on Saturday. We look to share uh, in our uh, virtual church school, and we're grateful for all those who are sharing virtually in our church school uh, every Sunday morning from 9 a.m. to 10 <clears throat> a.m. Uh, via the phone system. So please, all those teachers, we are grateful for them uh, who share and participate uh, in the crit virtual Christian education ministry. Uh, and if you are interested in participating, please call the church office <clears throat> and share uh, and let them know and they will give you the information. Uh, the Brotherhood Ministry virtual prayer breakfast will take place on Saturday, March the 27th uh, at 10 a.m. Uh, and to register for the Zoom access, please get in contact with the church office. You will be asked to give your name and your email address, and the email will be sent with the Zoom link connected to it. Registration for the Brotherhood prayer breakfast will be open until Tuesday, March 23rd and the Zoom will be sent out with the access code on March 25th. That is Thursday. We are incredibly excited um, that we are getting ourselves ready for the women's ministry weekend. It is going to be, amen. The bomb.com. Amen. The Women's Connection is going to be celebrating the entire week via social media. There is a week of virtual interactive activities planned to celebrate and honor the women of New Calvary. And so, uh, <clears throat> 
There's going to be announcements, there's going to be virtual uh, ads, there's going to be graphics that are going to be sent out that are that going to include your participation and how you participate. But the weekend is packed and filled on Friday. There's going to be cook and conversation. You're going to be cooking and conversing, not conversating, conversing. You're going to be cooking and conversing. Join uh, New Calvary Baptist Church from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. for cooking and conversation hosted by the women's ministry. Reverend Sharice Parker Freeman, Freeman will send out all of the recipes so that you can join in on the fun. Saturday, women's workshop from 10 to 12 with the special guest on financial fitness from 10 15 to 11 you'll talk about financial fitness with reverend christine roebuck and there will be giveaways for that and then on 11 to 12 uh, there will be spiritual processing and a spiritual moment with my sister my home girl the reverend dr danielle bahuro amen she is a clinical uh, pastoral education supervisor, and she uh, is going to be talking and dealing with self-care and how we talk about what it means to be restored. And then on Sunday, March 21st, uh, the worship service will be at 11 a.m., and we will share and be blessed by the powerful preaching of the Reverend Dion Bossier. Amen. She is uh, the chapel uh, of the United Nations, the chapel of the Chapel of the United Nations and she is a sister beloved and powerful preacher of the gospel and so we are excited about what God is doing in this place and so we are excited about what is going to take place on this upcoming weekend so make sure ladies that you sign up call up and sign in it's going to be an awesome 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 time we also want to just let you all know that on Easter Sunday we will be coming together for our first park and praise of the year. Amen. Amen. We go have our park and praise on uh, April the 4th. That is Sunday morning and it's first Sunday. We going to get it in. We going to be on like popcorn. We going to share and worship together. I know we've been looking forward to sharing with one another. And so at 10 a.m., beloved, at 10 a.m., we're going to be coming together. So we're going to find uh, and inform you and how we come together to worship and share together. So please make sure you mark your calendars and get out there in time to fellowship with us. We also want to encourage you all to make sure in your giving, we want to thank you all for your tithes and offerings. We're grateful. We know God loves a cheerful giver, but God also loves our faithfulness. And as you continue to give, you can send those offerings to 800 East Virginia Beach Boulevard here in the city of Norfolk, 2350. Four, or, or you can go on Givelify and make New Calvary your favorite place to give. However you do it, we understand that God honors our faithfulness in our giving. Please, beloved, like and subscribe uh, to all of our social media outlets and platforms, YouTube channel, uh, like and share, uh, get on our Facebook and our Instagram, New Calvary uh, Norfolk VA, and we are excited about continuing to share all of the wonderful things that are taking place here in this station of Zion. We look forward to continuing to worship and seeing what God has in store, but we prepare our hearts and minds for prayer in this moment as we understand the power of prayer and the significance of prayer in our lives lives and so we continue to pray for all of those who seek uh, and solicit our prayers in uh, this particular on uh, this particular day we pray for sister Brenda Morris we continue to pray for sister Leonthea Miller we pray for sister Patricia Ganey pray for sister La Barbara Willis uh, the couple Dolores and Joe Turner we pray for sister Willie May and brother George Little who returned to the hospital we pray for brother Willie Turner pray for brother Harold Brown and we pray for sister Cynthia Hannah and we pray for the the entire Allen family. We continue to lift up 
uh, family of Sister Serena Noel Thomas. Uh, his funeral arrangements are in the pending. We continue to pray for one another. Let us look to go to the throne of grace uh, as we go and petition and thank God in a word of prayer. God, how thankful we are for this worship experience. Grateful for this time you've allowed us to come together. Grateful, God, for the many blessings that you've given us, that you've poured into our souls. God, we look forward to what it is you're going to do and how it is you're going to bless. We look forward, God, into the ways in which you move and the ways in which you are able to turn things around. So God, simply have your way and continue to minister in this moment. Bless God those who have petitioned, uh, who have desired their names to be called on the road of those who desire prayer. But God, we still pray for those names who are not mentioned. Pray for those individuals in our families. Pray for those persons in our hearts. Pray for those people in our places of work who have simply said, when you go to New Calvary, stop and take a minute and pray for me. For we believe, God, that you're still working things out. We believe, God, that you're still in the blessing business. We still believe that we live in a nation that can be healed. We still believe that you're still able to turn situations and families and households around. We still believe that, God, even though you're sending stimulus checks, the greatest stimulus is the power of your Holy Spirit that feeds us and continues to lead us to run on just a little while longer. So help us, God, and stimulate us just a little more that we might give you glory. Help us, Lord, to run this race. Help us, God, to praise you and give you glory through it all. Help us to seek your face in our direction and what you give us to do, that we might do it with our sleeves rolled up, our shoulders back, and the faces that believe that you haven't brought us this far to leave us. God, we thank you for the New Calvary Baptist Church family. Thank you for the opportunity to worship, and we thank you for keeping us together, that we might continue just to give your name glory, to give your name honor, and to give your name the praise. It is in the wonderful, marvelous, and blessed name of Jesus that the people of God who love God together say amen, say amen, and say amen. Come on, put your thumbs up, put your hearts up for this choir that's going to bless us, amen, through song as we continue to lift up the name of the Lord in this worship experience.
how grateful we are for this time you've allowed us to come together we're grateful for worship grateful for the time to just think about all of the blessings that you've given grateful for the grace that has shown up in our lives we're grateful for the places that you have made ways out of no way so touch us just now continue to lead us as we go forward in this worship experience that we would not forget how your grace continues to touch us. That we would not be separate from your power and your majesty. If somebody needs to hear a word from you, someone needs to be inspired, someone needs to be changed, someone needs to be transformed. So let your healing work do what it does. Restore God as only you can. And in all things, we give you praise, honor, and glory. Bless this, your instrument. Allow it to play your music of grace and mercy. That I might be reduced in your majesty. And these people might see less of me and more of thee. Consecrate me now. To thy service, Lord, by the power of thy grace divine, let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and let my will be lost in thine. It is in the wonderful, marvelous, majestic name of Jesus, the people of God who love God together say, amen. Amen. Truly, we are grateful for this awesome choir who blessed us on today. Grateful for their ministry, their works, and we thank God them sharing. I call your attention to the book of 2 Kings, the book of 2 Kings in chapter 4. And we're going to look at the first seven verses of the book of 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4 verses 1 through 7. And here is how it is translated in the New International Version. It says, the wife of the man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that he re revered the Lord. But now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. Elisha replied to her, how can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except 
a little oil. Elisha said, go around and ask your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour oil into all the jars, and as each is filled, put it to one side. She left him and afterward shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her, and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, he said to her son, bring me another one. But he replied, there is not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. She went and told the man of God, and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what is left. Verse 3 says, Elisha said, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour oil into all the jars, and as each is filled, put it to one side. I want to talk for a while from this thought, this idea today, this morning. Handle your business. Handle your business. Many of you already know or have heard in some way, shape, or form of the name Mary McLeod Bethune. You know her as an advocate of civil rights and the empowerment of African Americans in the early and mid-1900s. And the truth is that there is not enough shared about Dr. Bethune and her gifts. She was one of the founders of the National Con Council for Negro Women in 1935. She was known in her day as the female Booker T. Washington. She was called the first lady of the struggle and had the ear and the attention of the first lady, Eleanor Roosevelt. Her life was filled with commitment to empowering African-American women, and in Daytona Beach, Florida, she started the Literary and Industrial Training School for Negro Girls in 1904. She started with six students, five girls aged 6 to 12, and her son, Albert. With a dollar and fifty cents, that is one dollar and fifty cents, that is six quarters, she started the school. And with rent for the small house being a, eleven dollars a month, she made benches from discarded crates. She made ink pens with elderberry juice as the ink and pencils from burned wood. Because the school was near the city dump, Mary Bethune and the parents of the children and people from the church raised money by selling sweet potato pies, ice cream, and fried fish to the crews who worked at the dump. Within a year, Mary Bethune was teaching more than 30 girls at the school. Today, Bethune-Cookman University educates over 3,500 students and has an endowment of $47 million and a campus of 85 acres. All of this has happened because over 100 years ago, a woman had a need regardless of the resources around her. Mary Bethune uh, saw something that needed to be dealt with and went forward, not focused on the material, but focused on the mission. There was a need that had to be dealt with, and the faith wasn't in the resources, but it was in the resilience to see it through. Lives that could have encountered other experiences that could have been detrimental now have a chance to prosper because Mary McLeod Bethune trusted in what God could do with just a little bit of possibility. I hope you're seeing where I'm going because as we share and celebrate this Woman's History Month, I think it's important to understand the significance of a woman's resilience. The stories of so many women who have, despite the obstacles, created an atmosphere that has been a blessing to so many and the generations around us. The faith of women has literally changed the course of history. 
The belief that things can be done with creativity and hard work and a little bit of elbow grease has shifted the way things get done in the world, in the country, and even in some of our own homes. The gift and blessing of the strength of a woman is the ability to trust in a way. Women know how to trust in a way. What, what I remember hearing from the women in my family, and I assume the women in your own, is that there was always a way. Not in the casual sense of the phrase, but in the inherent belief that God always has a way, baby. And because women have trusted God's way to make a way, they have often led movements and moments of change in charge in different places of society. Now, please understand me. I'm not suggesting that trusting in the way has always been easy or the way has always been simple or merely a concept or an idea. The way that God makes for us can be stressful. The way that God makes can be filled with obstacles. The way that God shows us could cause us to wonder why. But we thank God and give credit where credit is due. That women of faith have trusted that God's way has been a way that has been tried and true since the beginning of time. The truth is many of us have been there. We have been in those places when it seems like nothing will work. We have been in those places when it seems like we have never have enough or we don't have anything to get us to those places of restoration. But even when we can't see it, we are thankful for women who have been confident even when it seemed like there was nothing to be confident about. We thank God for the ability to see what others can miss. We thank God for women who understand that there is a chance and a hope in the smallest of details. That's the gift. That's the blessing of faithful women. That's the gift of those who trust in what God can do, even when they can't see the way that God's going to do it. The women who have blessed us and been faithful have been those who have bowed their heads in prayer and then rolled up their sleeves and lowered their shoulders and kept on pushing forward. All of us know women who know how to handle their business who can see the task in front of them and with a determined faith trust that God somehow will make a way for things to turn out all right, the things to happen the way they need to. The faith of women throughout the years has been one of the ways we have been able to handle our business. So when we look at this text and understand the way to handle business, you need to understand, beloved, that the proper way to handle your business, you have to have a good understanding of the obstacles in front of you. Elisha, the prophet, has been handed the mantle. It's been passed to him from Elijah, and he's sharing time with the company of prophets, prophets, men of God, who he's trained and raised to approach, uh, and is approached by one of the widows of one of the men he was working with. She comes to him in crisis. She tells Elisha, your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know how he served the Lord. But now the creditors are coming to take my two boys as slaves. See, because this is an agricultural culture, there are a lot of individuals who farm and who have farm land, and they farm the land for other people. And those who gave the materials to farm would look for their crop and their profit at the end of the season. But you got your materials on credit. And all you had to do was to tend your land. And once you tended the land and produced your produce or your crop, you had to pay it back. But unlike what happened the other day with the government, uh, unfortunately, these farmers did not get a $5 billion bailout. These farmers had to work it off. Small farmers were living hand to mouth and often were just making ends meet. But this woman's husband has died which means there is no crop to pay back and the debt that they owe. Now, what would happen in this circumstance is that the creditor could, make, it could take their property, he could take their equipment, their farming equipment such as it was, or he could even get to a place where he could make them and take their land, or if it really got bad, he could let them work as slaves, as indentured servants to pay it off. This woman's husband's debt is evidently so large that the threat is to take her two sons and make them work as slaves to pay off the debt. 
The father is gone. The father cannot work it off. So it's up to the two sons to have to pay it. She comes to Elisha because her husband was in the company of prophets who was faithful to the Lord and now she needs help. Watch this. Her issue, here it is, is not about the loan. Her issue is about the legacy. Don't miss this. The mother is not concerned with the material she's going to lose. She's worried about the inherited trouble that comes with her husband's debt. I need y'all to follow it. You missed it. She doesn't come to Elijah asking him about keeping her stuff. She doesn't even come to him talking about her husband. She only talks about the fact that he has died. She comes to Elijah saying they're trying to take my babies to make them pay for the debt of their father. What the father owes will be the legacy of the children, and they will have to pay the ultimate price. My husband's brokered the deal, but the circumstances of that have happened means that my children are going to have to suffer the consequences. See, the woman wants to make sure that the generation coming does not have to pay the price for the previous generation and what they've left. Here it is. Too many times we are leaving the generation that's coming after us with paying the price of what the previous generation has already done. Too many times the children are inheriting the debt of what has happened before them and they didn't create any of it. Uh, I'm not just talking about financial issues. I'm talking about consequences. Consequences that come with choices that the previous generation has made. Emotional consequences because we've got no connection. Social consequences because parents have not taught the upcoming generation the importance of integrity and respect and follow through and decency and patience and what character looks like and what a tempered response is supposed to be. We talk about these things like they're bad words, but we don't pass them along to a generation that's coming, and so they're dealing with the consequences. We don't talk about the importance of self-respect. Don't talk about young men respecting young women and young women respecting young men. We don't talk about the importance of what it means to be cordial and to have respect for elders and the older generation. We disconnect so young men don't have good father figures and young women don't have good models. And we complain and fuss about what, one, what, what young people look like and what they say and how they behave and we don't even connect that it's a debt that we made them pay. We've let the television become the authority in our homes so the real housewives teach you how to live. The kids of hip hop teach you how to be friends. Takashi 69 shows you how to promote yourself at all costs. And because the older generation is absent, the younger generation is carrying the debt. They're paying the consequences. And I'm not saying that it's always easy. That's not the argument. This woman's, hus this woman's husband didn't mean to die. This family business didn't mean to go belly up. This father, I'm sure, didn't want his debt to fall into the hands of his children, but the circumstances happened that he could not control, and this woman is in crisis because the situation could cause her to lose her children. But thank God that she makes a decision to go to Elisha. She could have worked this out with the creditor uh, and just dealt with the situation, but this woman trusted that Elisha could do something to help her situation. You see, the hope isn't in necessarily in Elisha. The hope is in the relationship. Uh, just look at the text. She goes to Elijah and says, your servant, my husband, is dead. Some of y'all missed it. She goes to the prophet and say, the one that you're familiar with is gone. And because you know who he is and what he was about and you know he was faithful, I need you to help me to find a way out of this situation. Some of y'all still ain't getting it because she knew that her husband had a relationship with the prophet. She trusted 
something that the prophet would know a way out of what she was going through. Can I help some of y'all this morning? Sometimes when you can't trust the situation, you need to trust the relationship that you have that it's able to get you through. Sometimes when you're not sure what the situation can do, you got to trust in the relationship that you have with the one who can make it all possible. Thank God that this woman trusted in the relationship because there are people who will come at you with all kinds of difficulties. They'll come at you with all kind of hardship. They'll come at you with all kind of excuses and reason, but that still doesn't change that you've got a relationship that can help you. You've got a relationship with the one who knows how to work it all out. We've been blessed by women who've had relationship with the Lord even when other things weren't working out and they trusted in the relationship when everything else failed. When nothing seemed to be going right, women said, I know that the Lord will make a way. When it didn't seem like it was going to happen, there were women who said, I ain't giving up because I know that God ain't finished with it yet. When nothing else seems to work, I fight for what's mine. When there's a threat to what I need, I trust God in the relationship that is going to get me out and work me out of this situation. Can you thank God for the relationship that you have even though the situation isn't what you want it to be? I'm grateful that I still got a relationship that I can trust in everything that God is doing. Gotta understand, to properly handle your business, you gotta work through the obstacles that you're facing. But here's the second thing, here's the second thing. To properly handle your business, you have to use your ability of observation. The woman has made a decision. Her children will not pay the debt of their father. They ain't going to live through the consequences of what their father has done. The woman has made a mistake. They ain't like that. That's not how they going to live with the consequences of what their parents were unable to do. But my, my children are going to have a different resolve and a different end in their situation. She goes to Elisha, tells him the situation. Elisha asks the question. He says, how can I help you? He says, tell me what you have in your house. Now, the text says that she cried out to Elijah, which means she went to Elijah, which means she's in Elijah's presence, which would suggest that she's not at home. But even though she's not at home, she gives an inventory of what's in her house. Uh, don't you know? Women know what she got in her house. Women know what they got in their house. Y'all ain't feeling me. My wife and I, we go shopping. Every week we go shopping for the groceries. Um, and I'll put some something in the cart and my wife would say no we already got that I said no, I ain't see it I didn't see that she said no we already got that we got that we got that I, I said I didn't see it and she said no I brought something the other day and some I got to the point now where I picked stuff off of the shelf I said do we have this at the house she said no we don't have that oh yeah we got that drop that in women know what they have in their house and so Elijah asked the question what do you have in your house and sister girl goes through the cabinets in her mind she goes through the cupboard and she says your servant has nothing then she says, wait a minute, except uh, a little bit of oil. The only thing she can recall in her home is a little olive oil in a jar. And I thought about that thing. The reason it gets almost overlooked is because the oil is the support. The oil is used with something. It's never used by itself. You cook other stuff with oil. You don't cook oil by itself. You cook the chicken with oil. You cook the lamb with oil. You cook the vegetables with oil. But it comes with something. The oil is the support, not the main thing. And the reason she almost missed it is because there was nothing to partner with it. If there was no star, then there was no support. 
You know, sometimes we can make the mistake of overlooking some stuff because it doesn't seem useful by itself. It doesn't seem like it's going to be valuable by itself. Sometimes we don't consider some stuff useful because we don't know how it can be used in our situation. What am I going to do with this oil? I ain't got no chicken. What am I going to do with this oil? I ain't got no beef. What am I going to do with this oil? And because I can't find no use for it, I can have the tendency to overlook it. And on top of that, she said, it's just a little bit. It wasn't that much to begin with. But don't you know that what remains can still be a resource? <laughs> Uh, what remains still got the power to be a resource. Uh, what do you have that can seem like a residual can still be a resource. What you have that seems like a leftover can still be a resource to bless you. Uh, see, part of the challenge that we always have is that we're always looking for the new way God is going to show up. we always looking for the new turnaround that God is going to do. And the reality is sometimes God shows up in what you already have. Preach small. I'm doing the best I can. Okay, look at this thing. Eliza asked the question, what do you have, sister, in your house? He doesn't say, I'm about to create a new situation for you. He doesn't say, you ain't got to worry about that house or what you lose because the Lord got a new house for you. Elijah doesn't tell her that her increase is coming and she, her new house is on the way. He says, no, God is going to do something with where you are right here in the moment. God is going to do something in the space where you are. All you have to do is observe. Look around and see what you have in your house. And I tell you, I declare, if we have not learned anything in this socially distant world of the pandemic is that we got to start looking at what we already have and ask God to create change and possibility with what we already see laying around. And, and don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong, y'all know me, I'm a progressive, I'm as progressive as they come. I'm for the forward movement of the Lord's church. I believe that God's got new things to show us in the church, I truly do. But some of the new things that God is going to show us is going to come from the stuff that we already have in our house. Some stuff is God's going to show us that's brand new is going to come from the stuff that we didn't even know it could be used that way. And we didn't even know it could be utilized that way. We didn't even know it could turn around that way. There's going to be some stuff that's going to bless the house that we didn't even know had them kind of possibilities. Sometimes you have to see what you have to make it work. She said, your servant doesn't have anything. I'm picturing her closing her eyes. I don't have anything at the house. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I do have a little bit of oil in a jar. Elisha says to her, go around and ask your neighbors for all, your neighbors for all empty jars. Don't ask just for a few of them. Then go inside, shut the door behind you and your sons, pour oil into all the jars, and as each is filled, put it to the side. <laughs> what God can use isn't always instantly helpful. It isn't about what the oil can do for you. Watch this. It isn't about what the oil can do for you. It's about what you can get from the oil. I did that too fast. It isn't about what the oil can do for you. It's about what you can get from the oil. You missed it. We're in a culture that asks the question, what can we get out of it? What will it do for us? But the other side is what can we get from the experience? See, I know I'm confusing you. I'll put it like this. I'll slow down. There are things that you can get out of a situation, but there are things that you can get from a situation. You missed that. There are things you can get out of a situation, and there are things you can get from a situation. What you get out of a situation is a result. What you get from a situation is the lesson. What you get out of the situation is what you believe will be produced. What you get from it is what you grow from as a result of going through it. Can I make this thing live? My brothers and I, my brothers and I, we have a weekly conversation with our father. We get the three of us, we call 
call our father and we have a conversation. We talk about the events going on with the kids. We talk about marriage, talk about politics, whatever. We do all of that to stay connected, to stay in the loop. Well, my brothers, immediately, how we do it in the small household is somebody is going to get teased. That's how we do it. Somebody's going to get teased. The other night was my night. And they immediately got on and started teasing. That's what they do. And so they immediately went into the antics about when we were younger. And naturally, my antics came up. Two antics, actually, two moments. One, all right, y'all don't judge me for this. Here it is. One, in the hip-hop era, in the hip-hop breakdance, bebop era, spray paint, and I took a spray can and I walked down the street and I tried to draw a hip-hop figure in the street and got caught by the police. Uh, and the other was a friend of mine, the two of us, we were raking leaves and instead of packing the leaves up and putting them in bags, we got the idea to burn the leaves in my backyard and we burned so much and there was so much smoke that somebody got scared and called the fire department and the fire department came to my backyard and it was a big scene. Now, the reasons for all that ain't important. Y'all don't need to know all that. But needless to say, the authorities were involved in both incidences. Police in one, fire department in the other. The spray paint thing, I got picked up by the police and taken to my house. The burning leaves, the fire department came to the house and they put the leaves out, but they never talked to me or my friend Sean and they walked around and never saw us. Y'all missed it. One, I was caught red-handed. The other, I didn't get discovered. The police thing, I got out of the situation that if you do stuff, that there are consequences that come with it. But what I got from the leaf situation is that sometimes even when you're to blame, God's grace can still cause you to be passed over. Some of y'all ain't feeling it. What am I saying? That if you can get something out of a situation, that's the result. But the lesson, the memory that you get from a situation is what you grow from is that God is still able to cover you and give you grace when punishment is still what you deserve. Can y'all declare that there's some moments when I got some stuff out of a situation oh but I'm so glad that I went through some stuff and I learned from what it is I've gone through. Don't always look to get something out of a situation but let God know what you want to get from the situation. If you watch God work, God can show you how things can work out even when you don't know how it's going to end up. This woman said, I can't see what I'm going to get out of this situation, but I'm going to trust that I can get something from it. I don't know what I can get from a little bit of oil. I don't know what I can get out of a little bit of oil, but I'm going to see what I can get from trusting the man of God. And whatever happens, God is still working this thing out. Be observant and see more than what's just immediate. Trust that things aren't always in an instant. Trust that there are going to be some blessed delays that happen in your life. Trust in the things that people will overlook. Observe the overlooked and trust that God can still work something out, even with the things that seem unimportant. There are some places where folks said it didn't matter, where folks said it wasn't important, where folks said you just needed to move on, but there was something in your spirit that caused you to hold on just a little while longer and say, no, I believe. God is working something out in this. I believe God is doing something and as a result of it, something came forth. Don't give up on what God has for you because God said you can still get something from the situation. Un uh, to properly handle your business, got to make sure that you observe the situation. Properly handle your business, you got to make sure um, that you understand that some stuff is not overlooked. You got to be observant. But the final thing is, to properly handle your business, you got to ha make the most out of all of your opportunities. Here it is. Elijah tells the woman to go get her neighbors and ask them for all of the jars. Don't ask for just a few. Ask for all of the jars. I love that part. If you need God to show up, don't minimize what God is going to do. 
If you need God to show up, don't minimize what God is going to do. I think I just stumbled onto something. If you need God to show up, then don't minimize how God is going to show up. It becomes our job to make sure that God shows up as big as God wants to show up. We got to have an imagination that believes God can do it. We got to have an imagination that says God is larger than the container that anyone can put God in. We just need to be ready to open ourselves up to what's about to happen. If you want God to show up in a major way, then don't come up with minimum preparation. If you want God to show up big, then don't come with small expectations. If you want God to change the direction, then don't show up with little ideas. Come ready to get everything that God can give you. He tells her, he said, don't ask for a few jars. Don't ask for a little bit. And then go home and shut the door behind you and your sons. Don't let everybody know. Can I help you? Don't let everybody know what the Lord is doing for you all the time. Don't let everybody know what God is doing. Give God time to work this thing through. And you don't need a whole lot of people involved in your experiences sometimes. Sometimes it just needs to be you and the Lord working some stuff out. Sometimes it just needs to be you and God figuring some stuff out and watching the miracles and not watching how God works through some of the most difficult to situation. I think I said something again. Sometimes you need to get into some spaces with God so God can work some stuff out with you too many times we find ourselves trying to involve others and hear what somebody else got to say. Listening to the advice of our family. Listening to the advice of the preacher. Listening to our mentor. Listening to the latest TV preacher's tape. And listening to the new revelation that the prophet is going to come through with. When all you got to do sometime is just shut the door and say, me and you, God, let's work this thing out. Me and you, and I need to know how you going to show up. God got a message and a word for you. God's got steps for you to take. God's got assignment for you to fulfill. Shut the door and be obedient and work some stuff out in your own space. This woman, she shuts the door, takes the borrowed jars, sits one of the jars down on the table, takes the jar she has with a little bit of oil, and she starts pouring. <laughs> She's watching the borrowed jar fill up. She pulls it back, tells her son, the oldest boy, she says, bring me another jar. Brings her another jar. She puts it where the first jar was. She takes the jar that had a little bit of oil, and she starts pouring again. The jar fills up. She pulls back. She said, Lord, have mercy. She said, boy, look to the youngest boy. Said, bring me another jar. He puts that jar where the other jar is, and she pours that jar with a little bit of oil and just keep on flowing. I'm, my, my mind's eye said she's scared to look in the jar. She's afraid to look in to see what's coming out. So she's just pouring with it. She takes the jar that's being and borrowed and starts filling them up and just putting them to the side of the room in each jar she sets over to the side she just keep looking as the jars keep getting filled up and as she's seeing jars getting filled with oil she's got jars because she's gone to her neighbors but she's got oil because she got somewhere to put it some of y'all missed it she got jars because she went to her neighbor but she got oil because she got somewhere to put it God's got resources God can pour out everything that you need. God can supply it for you. God just wants you to have a place that you can receive what God is trying to send you. It's not that God can't give you what you need. You just got to have the space to contain it. You need something to help you hold what the Lord is trying to send you. In other words, are you available to handle what God is trying to give you? Can I make it plain? The woman is pouring. The jars are holding what's being poured. But God is doing the providing. Part of the lesson is not where it's coming from. Part of the lesson is, can we make room for what God is doing? In this season of restoration, my brothers and sisters, some of us have lost the places in our lives where we can be filled. We don't have room because we've limited ourselves to what we can have. We have a jar for our work. We got a jar for our family. We got a jar for the bills. We got a jar for the kids. We got a jar full of frustration. We got a jar for the pandemic. We got a jar for social distancing. But when God wants to pour, we don't have any more room. There isn't, 
that God, it isn't that God can't see. The issue is that we haven't made room for what God wants to deposit in us. We have to make room for God to open doors. We got to make room for God to continue to supply what we need. The woman wasn't responsible for supplying the oil. She was responsible for making the space for who was supplying. Where are you in making space for what God is supplying? That's a good Lenten question. Where are you making space to find the space for what God is trying to send you? She just keeps pouring. Because she keeps pouring and because there's space, God keeps supplying. Her sons bring jar after jar after jar. It's like D a DJ Khaled song and another one and another one and another one. God keeps on supplying and she just keeps on pouring. How do I know that it's not about what God can send, but it's about what we receive? You say, how do I know it's about that? Because the text tells us. The text says when she ran out of jars, the oil stopped. The only reason the oil stopped is that there was nowhere else for it to go. There was nowhere else. Watch this. More flowing oil would only be wasted. And God isn't to wasting what has value. So when she went and told Elisha, she told him, she said, they filled up all the jars that we had. Elijah told her, go and sell the oil and pay your debts. You and your sons can live off what is left. Y'all missed a good shout. Elijah told her, go and pay your debts. That alone is shout worthy. Because she has to, <clears throat> all she has to do uh, is go to the pay off the debt uh, and, and resist the opportunity to sell her sons. All she's got to do is pay the debt and her sons are safe. That's shout worthy all by itself. But not only did she make enough to pay the debts, but she paid enough to live on. <laughs> Y'all still missing the shout. Y'all still ain't shouting with me. God is not just finished with the debt. God is blessing so that her life is going to be changed. This ain't about the money. This is so that she never has to go back to that kind of existence again. God isn't trying to get you to just survive. God is trying to get you to change your trajectory. God just ain't trying to get you to get over. God is trying to change the whole way you live. God just they trying to get you in the place of the pass by and to make it through. God just doesn't want you to make it. God wants your life to change and go further than you ever imagined it could. You just got to understand that God is able to send what can make room for you. That even though it doesn't look like much, God can send to you what you need to take you to the point of changing your situation. Don't look at what you have. You need to look at what God is able to add to it. I just said something. Don't look at what you have. You need to look at what God is able to add to it. See, make this thing live. I'm done. When I was a teenager, I don't remember when it was. I was a teenager. I was at my grandparents' house. One time I was at my grandparents' house and my gra uh, one of my aunts uh, told me, I don't know what aunt it was. My aunt said, go and wash those dishes for your grandparents. Go and wash those dishes for your grandmother. So I went over to the sink. It was not a lot of dishes, but a good number of dishes in there, and only a few of them. And I walked over, and I grabbed the dish detergent, and there was only a small little bit in the corner of the dish detergent. I looked at it under the cabinet to see if there was some more. There wasn't no more. I looked around the kitchen, see if I could find another bottle. Looked in the cupboards. There wasn't any more. This dish detergent couldn't find anything. Finally, my grandmother came into the kitchen. She said, what you looking for, baby? I said, well... <clears throat> Uh, somebody told me wash these dishes. I looked into the cupboard, and then we ain't got no more dish detergent. Ain't no more dish detergent here. And so she did the same thing I did. She looked down in the in the bottom underneath the sink. Now I'm a teenager. I ain't say I already looked there. I just let her do what she doing. So I stood right there. She looked underneath, didn't find it. She looked in the cupboard, didn't see any more. She looked around, thought about where some might be. She said, mm. and then she took the bottle from my hand, and then she took the top off, and then she turned the water on and ran some water, and then she put a little bit of water in there. Then she put the top back on, shook it up real good, handed it to me, and said, "Go." 
go ahead and wash them dishes. She said, that'll work. I said, mama, we call her mama. I said, mama, that's only a little bit of soap in the bottle. She looked at me and said, yeah, it's a little, but if you add something to it, it could go a long way. Some of y'all missing my shout. All I'm trying to tell you is that we know some people in our lives who knew how to take a little bit and add something to it and make it last a long way. We thank God for some of the women in our lives who knew how to stretch some stuff and make it go further than it was supposed to go and make it last and go a long way. All I'm trying to tell you, New Calvary, is if you look at what you have, don't look at it as not enough. That you might not seem like it's much, but if you just add a little bit to it, if you just trust in what God can add to it, your whole situation can get turned around. You might have a little bit, but if you add a little prayer to it, if you add a little hope to it, if you add some planning to it, if you add some worship to it, if you add some hard work to it, if you just add some elbow grease to it, I guarantee you, with the Lord on your side, it's going to go a long way. Can a few of y'all in here just say, I've had a little bit, but I've added what God has given me, and it's made it stretch a long way. Don't worry about what you have. God does all the supplying. Don't worry about what it looks like. Just make room for what God is trying to send you, because if you just add a little bit of spirit to it, it can go a long way. If you just add a little bit of possibility to it, God can make it stretch further than you ever thought it could go. I need a few of y'all to just put some lights up and declare that because my God knows how to make a way when it seems like there's no way, I've seen God take it and make it go a mighty long way. And if you don't believe that God can take a little and stretch it a long way, just tell them you're looking at the evidence because God took a little bit of me and tatted a whole lot of Jesus and has gone a whole long way. God took a little bit of my sorrow and took a little bit of spirit and made it go a mighty long way. God took my frustration and took a whole lot of Jesus and made it stretch a mighty long way. God took my desperation and put a little bit of power in the middle of it all and made it stretch a mighty long way. Give it to Jesus. He will make it stretch a mighty long way. Say yeah. Say yeah. It'll stretch a mighty. He can make it go a mighty long way. Just go on, shake it up. Add a little something to it and shake it up and watch God take it a mighty long way. We thank God for this moment. We thank God for this opportunity to just worship, to give God praise and glory for all that God has done. And so as we share in this moment together, we send this opportunity, this time of invitation that this moment might be for you. This time may be for you. Maybe somebody under the sound of my voice, maybe somebody looking to share with the New Calvary Baptist Church family, looking to be a part of the New Calvary Fellowship. No matter where you are, near or far, we believe that God is still doing great things and we believe God is still working things out uh, in all of our lives. So if that's your desire, if that's your heart, come on and make your decision. You can put it, uh, you can call the number it's on the screen. You can put it in the chat. You can reach out to the church, 627-757-627-1269, and let um, them know that you desire to be a part of the membership of the New Calvary Baptist Church family. We thank God for what is happening in this moment. Thank God for all that God has done. We want to just make a few more announcements. Please be mindful that if you are interested in being a part of the audio video ministry here at New Calvary Baptist Church. We would love to have you. We are growing, and because we are growing, we are looking forward to people sharing and being and using their gifts to be a blessing to us. So we want you to share. So just reach out, uh, call us, hit us up, call the church, hit us in the section in the comment section as we will reach out to you and share as we look to grow uh, in our audio and our video ministry. We look to share with you tomorrow morning, Monday at 8 a.m. 
as we look to be a part of our prayer call as we pray together uh, and share with one another as we bring in the week expecting and believing God to do great things we are still moving uh, in our restoration from removal to restoration Bible study and how God is moving and blessing in that we thank you for your sharing thank you for your comments thank you for being a part of that we are being blessed by you that is Wednesday at 7 p.m. Uh, and we look to share with you all as we prepare to depart from this place we give you this benediction that has been put together from several African prayers uh, as we continue to share with one another may God set you free May God guard you night and day. May God set you in the right place. May God give you good health in mind, body, and in spirit. May you be reminded, whether in the darkness or in your life, that God's grace is with you. May God's power elevate you to grow into greater things. May God's togetherness guide us and help us to bring peace and understanding to protect the world. And we believe this together that it is so. And together, the people of God say ashe and amen and amen. We love you and we bless you. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Saubona, we see you. Be good and be care, care of yourself and each other. Till next time, peace.